Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and I'm pretty sick. But what makes me even sicker is the fact that Microsoft keep on stuffing a load of this crap into the operating system, which we just do not want and is spying on you, telemetry, co-pilot, etc, etc. There's many ways of skinning this goose, but one that I found which is actually pretty decent, and it's got a nice user interface, is a piece of software from O and O. So let's head over to the computer, we'll take a closer look and see what it's all about, and see if it's right for you. Okay, so this is on our Windows 11 desktop. This actual software works with Windows 10 and Windows 11. So if we go into the software, go into products, and we go into oh no, shut up 10 plus plus. This is a free anti-spy tool for Windows 10 and Windows 11. So we'll click on that one. Gives you a brief overview of what it can do, such as disable Windows Copilot and recall, adapt your security settings, protect your privacy, control location services, disable telemetry from Microsoft Office, and do not pass on your user data and diagnostics. Also, you've got some other stuff there, so it's portable, no installation required, free of charge to use, etc., etc., etc. So, best thing to do, I think, is to go ahead and download this. And I'll say there, your download should begin shortly. When the download is ready, you can choose a location. So I'm just gonna set this to my Windows desktop, but of course, you can, if you want to, put this onto a USB flash drive for portability, and you can take it around and install it on your friends' PCs and business PCs, whatever you wanna do. Anyway, click on save, very small download. As you can see there, that is done already, so it's uh, two megabytes. So we can close this window down, and now we've got our application on the desktop. So we're gonna go ahead, double click, you'll get the user account control notification cup, as you always will with any of these types of programs and click on yes and here we have our user interface so no command line all of that is done in the background for you so that's a quick overview of what we got so we've got our privacy settings all down in this lower pane we've also got the option for installing this for the current user or you can actually install it for the local machine so if you've got multiple users on the same computer choose local machine if it's just you choose current user. And of course, if you do it as current user and you have one lot of settings that you want to use and someone else who's got an account on the machine wants to actually allow some of the telemetry data out, they can make it of their own accord. So yeah, choose what you want, current user or local machine. At the top here, you've got options for files. So you can import settings, you can export your settings. So if you want to make it quicker to do multiple machines, also in actions, you can apply only the recommended settings. So this actually refers to what we can see here on the right hand side. So this is the recommended section. So you've got recommended, limited or no. So some things aren't actually recommended, but you can do them nonetheless. You've also got recommended and somewhat recommended. So that's gonna be anything in yellow. And if you wanna do apply all settings, that will effectively pretty much lock your machine down but obviously that does come with some caveats that you will break some applications. So do bear that in mind. You can read through what all of these are and anything which has got no next to it. Obviously just read what it's all about. So like for this sending URLs from apps to the Microsoft Windows Store, that potentially can break the Windows Store. So you probably don't want to do that. Anyway, you've also got the undo all changes. So if you make a change and you're thinking, actually, damn, I've broken it. You can also undo your changes. But what I would suggest to do before you do any of this stuff is to create a system restore point or potentially run a system backup. If you haven't got any backup software, don't worry. o and have got you covered. They also do a range of backup software systems or you can backup to your NAS or USB drive, whatever you want to do. But maybe we'll take a look at those in a later video. Also you've got options in the view so you can view by category. You can use blue or gray buttons. So if you're colorblind and green and red isn't your thing, you can use blue and gray, which some people may benefit from. We've also got the uh, show ID of setting in the description. So if you roll over them, you can actually see what the installation ID is and that kind of stuff. Uh, you may or may not want to see that. You've also got the app mode. So you can have it in dark or light. Some people may prefer dark. Uh, personally, I'm not too sure, but I actually a bit old school, so I prefer light, but you choose whichever works for you. You've also got language options there as well, and you've got a help section, so you've got a short guide, and you can check online for a new version. Click on that, say, so, yep, you're using the latest version of Ono oh No Shut Up 10 Plus Plus. So that's all good, so we can close this window down, and now let's head into the actual settings. So these are broken down into individual kind of sections, and if you click on each one, you can get 
more information on what it's actually trying to do. So that's pretty handy. I'm not going to go through all of these in great depth because uh, that's going to be down to the individual, what you want to do. I'm just going to give you like an overview. So in here, we've got our privacy. So you've got things like disabling and resetting of the advertising ID and info, disable transmission of typing information. Obviously, like, those are kind of common sense ones. You've got disable suggestions in the timeline. I kind of, yeah, I don't really want that. And as soon as you try and do anything, it is going to ask you, do you want to create a system restore point? This step is strongly recommended just in case something goes wrong. And actually, I will say I have done this on another computer. And for some bizarre reason, my USB capture card stopped working after I did it. So I had to do a system restore. So you have been warned. This can potentially break applications. So do kind of take heed of this warning. I've already done a backup of my own system. So we're absolutely fine there. But if you want to take a restore point, you can do. Click on yes, and there we go. We've taken a snapshot in the background. So other things we've got here. So obviously you can read through these as you want to go through. Like if there's something which you're not sure of, obviously leave it alone or just check on the side or just click on it. And it'll give you more information about what it is. So app notifications. So notifications on the tiles, lock screen or desktop. Maybe you want that, maybe you don't, I don't know. Disable local language for browsers, uh, sorry, disable access to local language, text suggestions when typing on the keyboard. Yeah, you got the idea of what this does. So you've got your app privacy. So you've got access to user account information. So yeah, that's obviously, that's a pretty good thing. And basically just go through, read through exactly what settings you want. Some of you are probably coming here because you're a little bit peeved about the new stuff going on in Microsoft. So especially with things like the synchronization of your Windows settings, so like all of this stuff, you don't really want any of that done. And also Cortana, so you can disable and reset Cortana. Most people have probably uninstalled that by now, but there's an option for you. You can also disable input personalization. And some of the more important ones here, so obviously things like Windows Copilot, disable Windows Copilot, disable the Copilot button from the taskbar, which normally lives down here and also disable Windows Copilot Plus Recall. That's obviously quite a new thing and has been uh, causing quite a bit of a stir in the community. Also, you've got the disabled diagnostic data for tailor-made user experience. You might want to get rid of that stuff. And also Windows Explorer, occasionally showing app suggestions. That's a pain, don't want that. Do not show recently opened items and jump lists. Yep, yeah, that's pretty good for security. And disable ads in Windows Explorer and OneDrive. Obviously, why would you want those? Also, you've got Options to disable the Windows Spotlight. So that is where you get a new desktop background. So yeah, on your lock screen. So I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, disable fun facts, tips, tricks, and more on your lock screen. Yeah, I don't really want those either. And also disable notifications on the lock screen. This is probably important if you have your PC in a more open area. So you might have a notification on your screen, which is uh, from an email or something, which you don't want people to see. So you can enable that if you want to. You also got options to disable access to mobile devices, disable phone link app. Yeah, don't use any of those. So you can go through and uh, yeah, get rid of whatever you want to. Disable search with AI. Yep, we don't want searching with AI. And also disable the extension of Windows search with Bing. Most people don't want that either. You got stuff for the taskbar, so the people icon. I don't use that. Uh, meet now. News and interest. I don't particularly want that. I think I've already disabled it, so I don't think I can use that anyway and disable widgets, so yeah. That's why I can't do that, because I've already selected those in a previous application. Uh, feedback reminders, get rid of that. And Windows Media Player Diagnostics. Have a look through, see what is kind of resonating with you personally, what you want to do. Again, if you've got Microsoft Office, you can basically de disable all that kind of stuff as well. If you're not entirely sure, like I said, you can go to Actions and just do Apply Only Recommended Settings, or you can do Recommended and Somewhat Recommended Settings. So take your choice. If you do the green one, it'll do about 79 settings. If you do the green and the amber, it should be about 200 or so. Again, it'll tell you which ones you can do. And of course, if you're not sure, you can undo all your changes and revert back. So yeah, you can choose what you want to do. I'll do recommended and somewhat recommended. So we've done another 94 settings there. Again, you can go through and double check disabling things. Some of these things won't be able to be disabled if they've been disabled in a previous software or you've done it manually in the registry. So I think I've probably waffled on for way too long about this, but again, I think nice little tool does require a little bit of in-depth knowledge of Windows and what you're doing. So obviously do be careful. 
If you're not entirely sure, please feel free to let me know in that comment section and I'll try and help you as best I can. If you want a quicker and more concise answer, I would strongly suggest you head over to our Discord. It's completely free to join. Links for the Discord will be in the video description. And also, when you go into the Discord, make sure you click on that you agree to the rules, otherwise you won't gain access to the tech support rooms and other valuable information. So here we go, there's some information on the O&O Shut Up software. I think it's pretty good, and they've got a lot of other software items there, which may be of interest, so feel free to check those out in the meantime. We'll possibly do some follow-up videos on some of those other pieces of software, so if you want to see how those go, make sure you click on the subscribe button and the join notification, that way you'll be notified of future video releases. I think that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.